This is an American chestnut plantation in Shenango County in upstate New York. Several acres, I would guess four acres maybe. <clears throat> I believe it's a gentleman named Roy Hopke started this. There are a lot of trees that can get about as big as they can get before succumbing to blight. Look how upright they are, even in the middle of a field. They continually replant because, well, the idea is that they're preserving some of the genetics. You can see the tree tubes everywhere. And when the transgenic chestnut is approved, I don't think they're really allowed to use the genes from here, at least on the state property, because of some anti-GMO program that the state is involved in. It's at least according to the DEC forester I spoke with. You can see by the time they're 20 to 25 feet tall they are mostly killed by then. Today is September 7th, and the burrs are still immature. I guess it'll be another three weeks or a month before these start opening and falling to the ground. And I believe the American Chestnut Foundation will come and collect all of the seeds and distribute them for free to members. They're nice looking trees if they weren't lighted. Here you can see what happens. And this will girdle the tree within probably next year. It still has this side still good. But you can see how it gets in here too. Basically, as soon as they're, they're mature enough that the bark starts to split, that fungus gets in and kills them. That has a lot of burrs on it. And the only hope at this point for the ch American chestnut is the DNA modified. Um, DNA sequencing or testing recently confirmed that there are 8 to 11 uh, 8 to 11, what do you call them? Genes that confer blight resistance to Chinese chestnut. And so basically, when it's like only one in. <clears throat> it requires too many trees um, to breed that traditionally to get 8 to 11 genes into an American chestnut. This one got really big before it died. It could be 30 feet. And that's like 8 inches. But yeah, you can see what happens. It's almost always where they start to limb out. And at the down at the bottom. So sometimes you'll see one I think 
This may, that's interesting. My Dunstans did this this year. They were healthy at first. Then the leaves were curled like this, I think because of drought. And then this last growth looks really healthy again. But this thing has grown two and a half or three feet this year. But anyways, the traditional breeding program they were doing down in Virginia, they just announced that it's not gonna work. There's not really a future in it. They were, they assumed there were two to three genes, which this is just your basic statistics. So there's a 50-50 chance of getting a gene. And if you need two or three, if you need two genes, it's 0.5 up to the two, 0.2 squared, 0.5 squared, which is 25% chance of getting both genes. But when you need eight to 11, even at eight, you would need, just for a 50% American, 50% Chinese, you would need several thousand trees to have a, an expected value of one or two trees that would be fully blight resistant. And there's just, it would take hundreds of years or it would take a lot of funding. This is the nicest tree that's still relatively healthy but is dying. There you can see it's starting. But what I see all the time on these trees is even if they look okay a little higher up, it's the all the way down at the ground, they something happens and they they get blight. All right. I don't know if uh, that was very coherent or not. I don't normally make videos, but this is a pretty cool place. It's actually pretty depressing, but it's pretty cool when you know that that uh, blight resistant tree should be approved by the FDA, USDA, all those, all those guys are, it looks like it's quite likely. And there's really shouldn't be anything, if you educate yourself, there's really nothing to be afraid of. There's just, think about being able to have these in your yard or on your land amazing. All right. Bye-bye.